So here we'll have a look at the implementation of the Metropolis algorithm for the 1D harmonic oscillator, all done in C++. We're going to need three header files, random, IO stream, CMath, and work in the namespace standard. We first define, then first define two trivial functions, one of them that calculates the potential energy given x, which of course is nothing more than x squared over 2, which is what we do over there. The other one that calculates the corresponding uh, reduced Boltzmann factor, the one only for the potential energy, which is exponent e to the minus beta v times vx, which is beta and vx. Okay, so you can clearly see why I'm doing it that way. Then the next thing we do, we do the Metropolis random walk, uh, in, which takes four arguments, the starting point, the value of beta, n, and a function that defines our measurement. And this complicated statement over here is essentially defines measure to be that function. Then we have a default random engine generator, and we have two uniform real distributions, one of them from minus one to one, and the other from zero to one, which is why we're gonna define two of these beasts. We take a variable that will calculate the average of our measurements and the average squared of our measurements. We start x to be x in, and we also count how many variables we've rejected. Then we make essentially n moves, n trial moves to see whether it works. So we first make a trial move, we define a function x nu, and we define the probability ratio, which is p for x nu divided by p for x. If that ratio is larger than 1, we accept the move anyway, but the only thing we need to worry about is the if that ratio is less than 1, and then we need to work on, and what we find essentially, we, fi we need to do the distribution 2 of the generator, because if this holds, essentially this number is 0.99, it will almost always be accepted. So the, if the number is 0.1, it will almost always be rejected. The number is almost larger. So this is a way to generate the probability prop ratio uh, acceptance of this move. And that's exactly what happens. If that's not the case, we reject it. We set, reset x, and essentially we step down twice in our value of uh, in, in the loops. And then after we've done that, we set x to be x new. So we Accept the, accept the point we're at, uh, we make a measurement, we add that measurement to v a v to get the average later on, the a v squared, we add the square to there, and at the end we return, as all of these codes do, the value of beta, the fraction of rejected moves, the point of x we're at, the average uh, measurement, and the average measurement squared. And those two make sense. So now we look go for the main code. The main code doesn't do that much. It just does a hundred thousand measurement. That's where n is a hundred thousand. What we do over there, and then we've got a loop over beta. Uh, for beta is one to four with steps of a half. And what we do over there, essentially, we just grab the result of the random walk, which we put in a vector, and then we can just address those things. Uh, over here, I just this was a debugging line I haven't removed from the code, and I probably should have. The next line we put out beta, essentially the result, which is essentially res1, if you look carefully, is the fraction of uh, rejected moves. And then what we do is we 2 times res3 over beta, so that's a, that is, should be kt over kt and should be equal to 1, as you can check. And then we make an estimate of the percentage error. So you may want to interpret what this rule does over there. And then you may want to run the code and see that you, it agrees with you. What I also ask you to do is update the potential to something else which makes it more interesting.